it's my honor to introduce uh, Tom Holt. Thank you, Joel. Uh, on behalf of our firm, Panel Gates, I would uh, certainly like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you uh, today. Uh, I think that uh, we will have a, a very informative and uh, uh, thought-provoking uh, uh, discussion. Uh, before uh, I begin with my remarks, I'd like to extend a special thanks to someone who has become a very important part of our firm in a very short time, and that is uh, our uh, uh, intern who was recently uh, graduated from the Fletcher School's LLM program, and that's uh, uh, Daisuke Takahashi. If you could stand, please, Guy. Uh, Guy has done a uh, superb job in preparing uh, the program today and working with everyone. Uh, the topic that we're going to be talking about, as Professor Trachtman uh, noted, is leadership and partnership. I emphasize partnership between the U.S. and Japan in managing legal and political risk in the Asian Pacific market. So uh, this uh, focus is uh, really on how the U.S. and Japan will jointly manage what uh, has become uh, a series of situations and circumstances in the Asian Pacific market that really are beyond uh, quantitative risk elements in financial markets, beyond sort of the firm level that we were talking about, the micro uh, economic uh, challenges, but focusing really on macro challenges. Uh, the uh, U.S. and Japan, however, will begin this endeavor uh, with a principled commonality, which is based uh, upon our democratic institutions in the first instance, uh, free market econ economies in each country, uh, the commitment to free trade, which is vitally important, particularly as we uh, confront rising protectionism here and elsewhere, uh, and the adherence to the rule of law, which is vitally important and I think transcends everything that we'll be talking about today. And lastly, a topic near and dear to my heart is the respect for intellectual property rights. All of these uh, commonalities, I think, will uh, will uh, enhance our abilities to confront the many challenges that uh, we will be facing. Now, while the relationship between uh, the U.S. and Japan has not been without its tensions, uh, Professor Gawa and I were talking uh, before uh, we came in here this afternoon and looking back to the 1980s when uh, there were clearly trade tensions, there were concerns about uh, and allegations that Japan was not uh, it, uh, rigidly adhering or, or faithfully and conscientiously adhering to the rule of law. Uh, but we were able to uh, surmount those differences, uh, and they were, they were quite pronounced. There were, there were uh, tariffs that were being imposed. The rhetoric had reached a, a, a fairly shrill level. But the U.S. and Japan were, were able to resolve their differences I believe because they shared powerful and persuasive attributes. Those attributes that I had discussed uh, earlier and principally being both democratic societies and also uh, countries with firm commitments to uh, free trade. And those commitments have allowed Japan and the U.S. to not only coexist, but to reinforce each other and prosper and indeed to have Japan align itself with the U.S. on issues that are vitally important to both of our countries. I think it's also important to note, as recent events would suggest, that the relationship between the U.S. and Japan has not simply been economic, but has also been strategic. The emergence of China as the world's second largest economy, as well as other uh, recent events uh, involving China and its neighbors, uh, has caused uh, uh, some uh, uh, the, has caused the uh, U.S. and Japan to, uh, I hesitate to use the word re-examine, but perhaps refocus on uh, its uh, relationship and to refocus on uh, its uh, mutual uh, interests and uh, their longstanding and deep ties between the countries. Uh, recent tensions between the U.S. and China, of which there seems to be, at least the popular press is to be believed uh, to be to no end, Washington's insistence upon a revaluation of the renminbi as a means of removing what is perceived to be an unfair trade advantage in favor of, of, of China, concern over intellectual property rights most recently, uh, or at least last fall, uh, there was a publication that suggested that essentially the price of admission of participating in the electric vehicle market in China, which is now 
the largest and mo most robust automotive industry or, 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 or market in the world at 17 million units a year. Their price of admission would be so-called sharing of technology, which in the minds of intellectual property lawyers who at least have some passing familiarity with, the, with TRIPS suggests a compulsive license. The very public emergence of the uh, Chinese uh, military has also been a cause of concern for the United States government. Uh, we know now that uh, as of last December, the U.S. Navy, uh, Naval uh, uh, Command has publicly acknowledged that China does have anti-ballistic uh, missile delivery capabilities that could compromise U.S. aircraft carriers in the, US, uh, in the Asian Pacific uh, uh, region. Secretary Gates was visiting, uh, was visiting Beijing uh, in, uh, in advance of uh, President Hu's visit here last month to the United States, and while there, the, uh, uh, there was essentially a, an electronic unveiling of a stealth uh, fighter uh, capability uh, in China, which would be roughly the analog of the U.S. F-22 uh, program. Uh, China's claims of suzerainty over vast expanses of the South China Sea has also placed strains on the U.S.-China relationship. But I think as importantly, it has also raised serious questions in the minds of the Japanese government both in the macro level and the micro level. So in that respect, our two countries share those concerns. Yet, despite these differences, uh, the interdependence of the U.S. Uh, and uh, Japan and Chinese uh, economies is uh, unmistakable, uh, and it will require that these differences be resolved peaceably and without resort to mercantilism or protectionism. I think a few familiar metrics underscore the degree to which the U.S. and Japanese and Chinese economies are enmeshed. As we know, over 14 percent of the total of U.S. foreign trade is with China, uh, as is over 20 percent of Japan's uh, foreign trade. Uh, the, uh, China, of course, uh, is the largest single investor in U.S. Treasury securities, which has been a cause of some concern uh, uh, and widespread concern in the United States. However, this interdependence uh, is, uh, has a concrete mutuality, and I will just give you one example. In February of last year, the Chinese, uh, at least factions within the Chinese military, had urged the civilian government to sell U.S. Treasury securities. Fortunately, the civilian, uh, uh, those in charge of, 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 of Chinese forex, uh, foreign exchange reserves, thought that was not a particularly good idea as a wholesale uh, sale of U.S. Treasury securities would have driven down the value of the dollar and helped and hence greatly diminish the value of the Chinese investment. Uh, as reported in the China Daily uh, last, uh, last summer, uh, the noted economist Yao Yang uh, noted, quote, we live in an interdependent world in which we will probably harm ourselves if we take unilateral action aimed at harming another state. So at least uh, for the time being, those views have, have prevailed. Uh, in closing, and to provide perhaps some, uh, some further context for the discussion we'll be having this afternoon, uh, Joseph Nye, as many of you know, has uh, recently published uh, 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 his most recent book, uh, The Nature of Power, uh, which I was uh, rushed to finish over the weekend before I came here today. And I would just like to have a, a quote from that that I do think uh, provides at least uh, 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 it, it's some, some uh, a sign sure, if you will, for today's discussion. That is, and let me quote, a major challenge would be the rise of a hostile hegemon uh, as Asia, Asia gradually regains the share of the world economy that corresponds to its more than half of the world's population. This requires a policy that welcomes China as a responsible stakeholder but hedges against possible hostility by maintaining close relations with Japan, India, and other countries in Asia that welcome an American presence. So with that quote, uh, I will uh, turn this over to our extraordinary panel uh, for this afternoon's uh, macro panel discussion. Thank you very much.